Hello and welcome, Tykes TV. Uh, got a full full crew on here. Uh, Ryan, James, and Charlie. Great to have you all on. Uh, no doubt we're going to have a fair bit of opinions and that. I mean, I'll come to you first, Charlie. I mean, me and Ryan did a, uh, a live last night, and Sod's Law would just come off, and 20 seconds later, I had to jump on back on again because we didn't. Swansea had announced it, kind of thing. But again, writing were on the wall. Uh, when you read statements and that, again, there's a culmination of things. So I'll let you have your sir, uh, Charlie. What, what, you know, how, how are you feeling and what, what's taking it, mate? Um, I'll be completely honest. I'm gutted, but mm. no, no manager's bigger than the club. Yeah. So if you don't, if you, like any player, if you don't want to be here, off your trot. See you later. We can replace them. We've done it before. Now, nah, yeah, we did have a good foundation. We thought we were onto something with Duff. Clearly. He weren't, and this is not me being harsh, but he's not sticking to his actions and the words that he's saying. You know, his ac his actions are different to his words. And for me, again, actions speak louder than words. You can say you can say all you want, but if you don't back it up, then you know it don't matter. It's it's no point saying it really. Mm -hmm. um, but I, like I say, I'm gutted. But at the same time, it's it's one of them. It's going to happen at some point. Get it out of the way now instead of mid-season. Yeah, I mean, James is coming on to what Charlie was saying. Be a bit gutted, a bit, bit, a bit of pill to swallow because at the beginning of the season, it was, you know, a lot of talk. He was all in. He's, he's not here for a five-minute one day. It's a, something he wants to build on and make it happen. And then when you read his statement, it's not about money, apparently. You know, he, he wants a challenge and Swansea's that. But again, it's, it's kind of cheap talk that in it james yeah definitely i mean especially what he said at the start as well um he's just completely gone against his word and it it hurt at the time but if any then again like charlie said if he doesn't want to be here then mm. there's there's plenty of options out there so not worth having someone that doesn't want to be at the club ryan i mean just going on we kind of all agree don't we you know statements yeah. we've all read it and we've gone through it actions again you know Talk and I thought we're going to be on a belief and that. Would it have made, would you, if it had gone like next season as our manager and it didn't work out for him, we still didn't get promoted. Could you have seen him moving on? You think, yeah, do you know what? He's had two years and he's going to crack on with it. Or would you still like to say, no, he's going to build it? It's it's one of them. It, he's not stuck to his words. I know there's a lot of stuff on social media calling him out as Judas and, you know, uh, memes of that going about. But I mean, when, when he says that and not long after Wembley, as well, but yeah. when you read statements, you're saying you were aware of other clubs, but two, you know, a couple of days after, it's like saying, Well, just sends down look as ones will crack on, and then it's all gone on it. I believe he said he's not even thinking about that, didn't he? Is what he said after after Wembley final. Mm. I'd just like him to stick to people to stick to the word. If you're not, mm. if your intentions is to use bounds as a springboard, then don't, don't make don't make empty promises. That's that's the mm. thing that hurts most for me. Mm. It's like Charlie touched on earlier, talk's cheap, and you. You come in with big, you know. I'm not here for five minutes. I'm not here. I'm not a flyby. I'm I'm here to build something. And then at first first opportunity, it's not like we've had to fend them off, is it? For the last two seasons, like mm. we have done with Mads, mm. he's gonna he's, he's just jumped at first opportunity. And the club have done everything they can to try and keep him within their financial constraints. You know, they've offered him an improved offer and everything else, and 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 he still said no. And I think that's just a bit, mm. it's a bit offside. It's a bit poor. Yeah, it's poor. Mm. I just think you know I'm. I'm a bit disappointed in him, to be honest with you. That, that, he's gone from hero to zero, hasn't he? Uh, unfortunately. Yeah, hero yeah, um, to zero. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's a bit. It's just a bit. It's just a bit. Say, like I said, you know, I understand people go. It happens to all football clubs. People go for more brass, and you would do if you were in your own working life. Like football slightly different to normal working life, but <laughs> it's just he shouldn't have said all those things and get people's hopes up and then jump. Not just a jump ship at first opportunity that that comes his way. Mm. Um, mm. And now it's like you know he talked up me and no, does it? He promises it just empty promises, and that's what I think that's what's most wounding for most Barnsley fans, I'd say. Yeah, uh, Dan, uh, great video, mate. Uh, so we're just going on about we we do obviously with statements and stuff, and just going on about you know a bit disappointing in, in talking about us as fans. But I, I would also imagine Dan, I think it's also a bit disappointing for board because fair play to board, it's all turned out that. They knew what you know what interested him, so they've gone out for improved contracts and 
you know, we want you to commit and we're building on something. And again, I, I you're looking on social media and not but praise for boy and I've tried to keep the man, but obviously the man's gone at this opportunity. So again, it it's it's a backward step for, for Barnes Football Club, but in this term, it's not necessarily directly the board at fault. It's the manager that's like saying they're gonna be in for a project, but is is gone and it's apparently not for monetary reasons. Um, yeah, it's. I, I read uh, just before about half an hour before I came on. I had a look at the um, the statement from the board, um, and it is clear that they wanted. It, it is clear that they wanted him to stay. Um, I think they set him on for that reason because they thought he were actually going to. He were going to do. He were going to stay and do well. Um, it's a diff. It's a difficult one. I, I don't. I. I can't. If everything that is claimed to, uh, the, if everything that's being said is true, then no, you can't blame the board. Um, I mean, he's got his. We don't know whether this is the first job offer that he's had. I mean, as much as he says that he might be, we, we knew that Huddersfield might have been sniffing round. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a different. It's a difficult one. It's. Um, I don't. I. I I like what the board are saying about being prepared and trying to get a new transfer, uh, getting a new replacement in there, and they've tried to look at every eventualities. Um, but it does it doesn't take away from the fact that they probably don't want to be doing this in the middle of a in the middle. Well, when we're coming up to pre season, and another thing that we haven't considered is the impact this is going to have because it's going to take attention away from filling those positions in the team. Mm. Um, which is the thing that I'm most concerned about personally. Um, I'm more concerned about having good players in there, um, uh, good players to even to, well, whether it would be, for example, Harry Eistead. But if we don't get Harry Eistead, we're going to have to replace him. We're going to have to replace Bobby Thomas. Um, and it's going to be that, that's going to be the biggest challenge. That's going to be the biggest challenge this season. I'm not just saying this out of. That would have been awful or resentful or bitter, but I think we can find, I think we can find another Michael Duff to put the place the way that he can. Um, but it's yeah. just down at board to make the right decision and actually find him. Yeah, I mean, just going on from Batman, Charlie. I mean, just, just touched on Veer, and we'll get on a bat manager, but we just touched on Veer with the, uh, you know, Ali Eistead. And for me, what can I say? Uh, it might be a bit controversial, this, but I'm going to call it out anyway. Is that does Ali Eistead want to play for Duff or does he want to play for the club? And battle my concern, but if he's only holding out for to play for Michael Duff, then fine, go. I'm not bothered. Yeah. I want to play it to play for a for Barnsley Football Club. I don't know what you you know, what you'll think about that, Charlie. For me, I think I said wanted to play for Duff. And that, that's my opinion. I think, yeah, he did well for us. I think with everything that we had together, with manager, with team, with fan morale, squad morale, that's what he wanted. But that was there through Duff. So, it, it, you know, I, that's my opinion. I think it's Duff. I don't think it's club. Mm. Mm. James, I mean, are you saying tech on that? But it's, it, it were more concerned about, you know, Playing for a certain manager rather than playing for a club, and just what Daniel were on about there is that we know that certain areas we need to look on for. Yeah, I, improving certain areas. Yeah, I'd rather have players that are hungry to play play for Barnsley. Like um, I liked it when James Norwood sort of signed his contract, and um, you can tell you want players like that who's like hungry and have a determination to do well. So, um, any players you want coming in, you want to play. Just give their heart for the club and if he's only playing for Duff and obviously his heart's not going to be in Barnsley so 100% agree hmm. Ryan I mean a lot's been said while we're on about players and then we'll come back to um, go on we'll come back to some of the players and managers is send but is there any worries that some players will decide to leave Barnsley well I think there's always that worry in there but I think there was that worry if we even kept Duff um, you know, I think maybe the lower of bigger clubs might get a pick coming in and 
might, might lure him away, but it might be even more tempting for him to do it now. So I think I think the, the the appointment of the manager need to hurry up and get it done sharpish, don't they? And make sure it's the right person for people that are gonna, you know, that these players are gonna want to play for. Mm. Um but I think I think that you know I think I think the contracts for players and, and managers are very different. So the club can stand a lot more firm on the on the players. And like we touched on last night, if they're coming in for like a look, we need to be saying to it, I, I grow a pair and say, oh, he's five if you want him, he's five million. Mm. You know what I mean? And and really and really tell it get get them told and and if we do sell him, at least we're getting five million. We can reinvest that, but that stuff needs to happen quickly as well, and not on last day at transfer window, doesn't it? But yeah, it's concerning times, mate. Uh, everything feels like a little bit up in air, right at the wrong time, just as we're coming into pre-season. Um, hopefully, there's going to be some. You know, it sounds like Devane is still there, doesn't it? Because he's he's up, mm. he's up high on uh, betting. He's, he's, he's favourite than any on, on odds. Um, so. You know, Davers is going to be there to keep a level head on him, and players like you know are going to have to get the senior players and, and get him with young lads and and try you know put an arm around the shoulder and um, until the money until the new two new gaffer comes in and hopefully sort of ward off any negativity that losing dust um, going to generate. Dan, just going on from that, get on about managers because we've had a touch about um, you know players and that. Your tech, I mean, there's a lot of if buts and maybe's, and there's all sorts of polls going out, different betting websites, you name it. I think if someone said all of a sudden there's going to be, but he, I don't know, Mick McCarthy's going to be in frame, all of a sudden everybody's on social media saying Mick McCarthy's going to be gaffer. No, we're against Mick McCarthy. I think that's just how it, how it is. Yeah. Um, I think obvious names what I've seen been banded about is Wilder, Darren Moore, Outsider is like uh, Stendhal, and then you're looking at Eric Ramsey. And, Again, it's if what what gets me is that the club have said that they're well underway with process. So this must have been, you know, going it's back to last week. Have been on. Yeah. So I mean, would you imagine that at this point now, Duff's gone? They've narrowed it down to three, maybe four potential candidates. Do you think? Um, yeah, um, I think they would have had. In an ideal world, they would have had about three or four possible replacements for Duff. Um, how they are going to carry out that recruitment process is of slight concern to me, if I'm honest. Um, the claim when we hired Duff, it was a very lengthy interview process. I think Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank were on, would want shortlist for. Uh, um, which uh, I'm glad they didn't do that. Um, <laughs> if I'm honest, we are it all turned out for him at Burton. Um, but yeah, I think they have. I think they do have a good idea and who they're gonna, who they want to get. If I'm honest, um, yeah, who that's gonna be? I don't think it's gonna be Chris Wilder. Um, if I'm honest, I don't want to. Why is that wages? Do you think or? Um. I don't think he fits into the model of what how we want to play. I think we're going to choose a manager based on the formation. I think we've got a good idea of how we want to play. And I think that is based on statistics, data, um and and obviously how the and how the players, the current crop of players, is going to fit within that system. Because when you, we've said before, and I don't think the club will fully say this out loud. They dance around it and try and tart the language up, so to speak. But our, but the the players on that pitch are our assets. Mm -hmm. We don't have a massive commercial value as a club. If you go to any clubs in middle of cities uh, that are based in cities, the reason why they haven't got the reason why they've got more more money. Yeah, okay, they've got. They have an average higher attendance, probably a little bit more merchandise. But the big reality is that you've got massive commercial interests, businesses putting good sponsorship fees into them, and it pays the bills. And that it manages to put them in front of a lot of other clubs. It's just the way the world is. Um, so our assets are our players. So 
they've got to take that into consideration because we've got to say, wait, we've got to put these in a system, we've got to put these in a formation where these lot are going to look absolutely brilliant. We're going to put them in the best po possible light so then we can resell them for transfer fees. So that's going to all go into consideration who the, who the manager's going to be. Um, so it's got to be somebody who plays the same formation as Duff. Darren Moore played it, but he played a lot more attacking with, with, with Wednesday. Um, Dave Challoner at Stockport, he's been on the list, seen his name banded about a few times. Um he plays a very similar system. I would reckon, I think they were a uh, talk of a Man United coach. Yeah, uh, Eric Ramsey. Eric Ramsey. Eric, Eric, yeah, um, very highly rated coach. Unfortunately, I think he's now the assistant manager of Wales. Um, mm. He's so, been back yeah. gamble. Time, Dan. Yeah. So I get met. He's been doing that part time anyway while he's been oh, at United. Has he? Oh, right. I didn't I know. I don't, know if that, I don't know if he'd had to give, give that up. He probably um, won't it because at least one we don't we don't break for international break, do we? So well, I, well, I would imagine. I mean, the, the thing is, whether he's the assistant manager of Wales, I think we've still got a po there's a possibility because he wants top job, and the, the end of the yeah, day, he'll, of he'll not want to be. He'll not if he gets a whiff at a top job, then. But then again, he'll probably look at it in the same way that Duff looks at it and think, well, you know, Barnes a good club, landed fourth in league last season. Um. I could get them off at line and try and get them up. And then World's your oyster then because you've got a promotion on your CV, which is going to happen with any other manager. I'm not saying it's it's the way football is, unfortunately. But, but yeah, so a manager that's going to fit that system. So them, them three, I would imagine, are the ones that's going to be looked at. I think I've heard I've heard the name David Cottrell uh, banded about, uh, but I'm not so keen on 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 that to be honest but I'm just due to his new percentage and stuff like that and he's done a great job at shrewsbury but i don't know whether i'd i'd like a manager personally and call me ambitious and some, some people would call me stupid they won't be the first but if they go up so if i want a manager that if we do go up this season or next season that we are uh, we can take that manager into the championship and we've got a good squad and we've got a good mentality and we've got a good system in place because uh, I think it would be, I think it would be known as project failure if we went up and then went straight back down again. And hmm. That's just what I believe personally. Yeah, yeah. But. Good check. Good check on that. I mean, Charlie, I mean, kind of echoes on some of Daniel's comments here. Like you say, it's whoever's going to come in, we're going to have it on the CV. Uh, Oh, you know, hopefully, hopefully that you know they can see some it that Duff don't. I mean, Duff's wanting a challenge with another club, and it won't for money, which we all know is load of bull. You're not going to take, you know, you're not going to take a page drop. Are you? you know, he could have been on some area, but he loved at Barnsley. Uh, I think my own take on it. I think it could be a bit of a pride in Chelsea at Swansea because I think their expectation will be higher, finishing tenth, and they'll be wanting to look at playoffs. And if that doesn't happen. I think grass in Thomas Green on the side. I could see him their fans losing faith and somewhere else go. Uh, but back to Barnsley. I mean, this is what we're all about. Barnsley is that I kind of get where he's coming from Eric Ramsey. Uh, I know he was linked last year, but I think Tanag said no, we're stopping here. He's highly regarded. We ain't set up at Manu. Um, again, Wilder. I kind of agree with Wilder. I just think, I don't know. Uh, back of my mind saying it's a possibility, but I think it. it be, might be down to the financial situation with that. Uh, again, Darren Moore. I know there's some people like saying I don't want Darren Moore because I'm, I'm not keen on his style and stuff like that. But you look at his record 96 points, and the other time he got promoted, he went to that unbeaten run. Yeah, we bet him twice and didn't league him that. But again, whoever comes in at club, they've got to work with the players that and the style and system, like what Dan said, via what we've got. Because I think if anybody comes in, we try going back to a far, far to it again. It's uh, I know football should be able to play in any position and formation, but again, when you're that accustomed and it works so well, you've kind of got a manager to come in that kind of style of play, aren't you, uh, Charlie? Yeah, it is. It's you don't want somebody coming in and changing it up too much. You don't, you, you know, you don't want to be starting fresh. Um, now I've been having a look. On about managers, like just having a look at who's out there, who's free agents, whatever else. 
Hmm. There's a couple of managers that you completely forget about who might be too much for our, our budget or whatever else. But you've got like Gus Poyer, um, you've got Nigel Atkins. I know you are further down the league and I know Gus Poyer, um, obviously he's had experience. You've got Chris Uton. I know he's manager of Ghana. But, you know, there's managers like that that you look and you think you've been there, you've been in top league. It's clearly not working out. Could it be a challenge for, for somebody like that? And it's probably off tangent. There's probably no interest in them at all. But, you know, it's it's an idea where you look and you've got to kind of consider them. I mean, I'd love one manager at Barnsley. is never going to come because it's way above our price budget. But I'd absolutely love Giovanni Van Bronckhurst, who were at Rangers. I think he... But again... We're not millionaires, are we? So we're never going to. We'll get all it. chip in and we'll help out on that yeah. one, Charlie. We'll all yeah. chip in. We'll get a GoFundMe yeah, page up. That that's it. Get a GoFundMe page. But no, in all seriousness, it's it's one of them. Um, Here's what we have, Charlie. Way. You mentioned some good names, via coaches like Gus playing back. But do you think do you think that the board now will be looking within the British or English league because they're sent to. Go that style rather than go abroad. I know people say, yeah, but we've had some good ones, we've had Ishmael, we've had, you know, send one back. I'm not saying no to about it, but I'm just saying, do you think that they will be tempted to have a look abroad and say, yeah, do you know what? He might do a job for us, or do you think it's more. I'm looking at betting, and all I'm seeing at minute mm-hmm. is coaches who are like in league here kind of thing. Yeah, it's a weird one, you know, because I don't mm-hmm. want to say we're not going to look abroad because I can guarantee that in two no, weeks' no. time we'll, we'll, no. we'll have a manager that's come from abroad that we've never heard of before. Yeah, but it's it's one of them. Personally, this disrespectfully, but I do I would want uh, you know an in-house name, somebody that everybody knows to get a stamp back on it. Mm. It's worked out of the out of the five managers that we've had previously. You know, a couple of PE teachers. We've had Struber, then we've had um, Ismail, you know, a couple of them's worked, but we can't take that risk. Mm. We cannot take that yeah. risk. It, it's it's too late. If they take that risk now, everything that we've built up for over the last season, 18 months at a push, you may as well just completely scrap it all and start again. Yeah, um, yeah. So, again, yeah, we want somebody we know. I, I wouldn't want to take risks. We, we, you know, personally, for me, I want Darren Moore. People might say I'm stupid. I it don't matter what style of football you say, uh, you play. Look at what he's done. He got Wednesday mm-hmm. promoted. Yeah. Yeah. He's turned a four nil deficit round against Peterborough. You know, we've lost in a playoff final. He can get a team back to winning ways. Mm-hmm. Now, my only concern is with what Duff's done. Are the players that stay going to want to trust the manager again? Are they going to want to put 100% into a manager and say, I'll try my absolute knackers off for you to give you everything because we know you're going to stay? Or are they going to say, you know what, I'm going to put 80% in because I did it last time and it just completely went, you know, it, it went round. I'll take you up on Batman, Charles, because I think it's a great point, but you just made via because we, me and Ryan were on about this last night about mental state of players. Bearing in mind what we've done. I'll come to you on a minute, Ryan, just after this, but I want to pick up on that because it's a very good point you've made for you. And I think a point in more, what you just on back of what you said via uh, Charlie, I think on back of that, I think we're more playing at Barnsley, you know, the club and you know the area. I think it'd be more suited to the man management kind of arm right shoulder and understanding players to, to encourage that on. And I think it's a good point you've made for you because a lot of people forget that. And we'll come on to sorry, Ryan. We'll come on to you in a minute. But I think what you yeah. said there, Charlie, you're looking for a manager not only to come in and improve the team and play, but also to be there for the players as well. And just what you picked up on there is like how many of them players are going to be like, how do we know? But this manager's not going to sod off in the end of the season. So yeah, I mean, I think I think more to fetch that though, Charlie, wouldn't you? That that's what I mean. I think mm. you would. You look at what all Wednesday players were saying about him. He's yeah. He's the man that turned that 4 0 deficit round. He gave them that belief. Mm. He he implemented that the day after their loss. Mm. So if we get more in early, why can't he come in and change our lads' mindset and say, you know what? Yeah, you've lost, but you know what? You go back again next. Well, you go next year and you don't get to that stage. You go one better and you're up automatically. That's what we want. 
Now, yeah. again, yeah. Hoping, hoping that players put 100% in. And yeah. for me, if players don't, I think more would drop them as well. I think he'd say, you yeah. know what, you're not sticking to us plan. You don't deserve to be there. Good point, back, Charlie. Good point, Matt. I, I mean, it... yeah. Sorry, Neil, go on. No, go on, sorry, no, go on, no, go on mate. I, I think, to be honest, um, I... We, I thought about I thought about this in the mental state of the players, and I think if I'm quite honest, I don't think that's going to play a, ma a major problem because I know, and as much as we hate to say it, and I, I pretty much include every player, well, mostly every player in that team. I think this is they're seeing this as a means to an end. They know that. If they're out, they're out here to put themselves in shop window. Luke O'Connell is especially he was a free agent. He's now had a fantastic season, and I would imagine that he's going on to going to have another fantastic season as well because I think he's a quality player. But I think the players can't have the day, the players can't have the same standards for a manager. They can't have different standards for a manager than what they expect to themselves. So they know that they're going to probably go and get a better offer. They know that, and I think. But the one thing that you are uh, the, the one thing I do agree with Charlie on this point is that Darren Moore and Duff are very much similar characters, and I think they are fantastic man managers. You can tell that they can. You can tell that where they motivate players on on pitch. You can tell the relationship. I don't know. You can tell they're just comfortable. You know, they're just comfortable at ball. They're not scared of making mistakes. To get their heads back up when you know when we. I think well, maybe when we've gone one nil down, we could have been a little bit better this season. But apart from that, they've been incredibly. Uh, they they appear to be. Incredibly more uh, like motivated sort of managers. So Darren Moore to me is would be a sensible replacement. Um, yeah. But as in the mental, as in the mental state of the players, I mean, I mean, if you're if you're a foot if if you're a footballer and you're told that you you you've got to put your head down now and you've got to go because managers now left, then I'd give you a bit of advice: is sack your bloody agent. Managers don't stay around for long. That's a well-known fact in football. It just don't happen. I mean, can you imagine? Do you think, what, I'm, do you think, I'm, you imagine do you think what happened at Watford if that happened? You know, do you think come back? Do you think come back, Ben? Ben, Dan. I mean, because me and Ryan were on about this last night. Bear in mind, we come, you know, we run the bodies into the ground down ten men, and we get it be all. And I'm looking at it like this, like now, is that Duff's gone? Is looked after this centre? He's moved on, regardless. Players are probably still on holiday and he's buggered off, and he's not even a. Decent to turn, probably he's probably text him and phoned him and let him go, but he answered him face to face and gone right. But I'm looking at it with the players, and like, how many of them players bought into and believed in the coach and the gaffer, the manager, whatever you want to call him, and saying, Yeah, do you know what? We're, we're, we're going to move on, we're going to, and more or less like us as fans. I mean, me as fans, I'm looking forward to the season. I'm thinking, Yeah, do you know what? We're going to crack on. But if I've if, if I'm a player. I'm relating to this if I'm at work and my gaffer turns around and says, Hey, we're very disappointing this year. What we're going to do, we're going to crack on. We've been improving this, we're going to improve in that. Then he sods off to another company, and I'm like, Well, what, what's happening now? And like, is you know, where's my future lay? I best go into my agent because if he's going to bugger off, what, what's you know, do you know what I mean? With that, it's like the, the lads have like all geared yeah. up to go into the next season, and and people say, Oh, yeah, but we're on thousands, Neil, and this. I get back totally, but at the end of the day, they are human beings, and a lot of them are young kids who was like yeah, are, probably yeah. a big defeat. And uh, again, it's going to be a delicate situation this because it could either maybe not going to affect with some. I mean, some players were vastly improved. I mean, you know, you're looking at Liam Kitchen, Mad Anderson. We all know rumours are about that. But if if my gaffer turned around and said one thing, and you think, yeah, do you know what, I'm going to come and play for him. It's a prime example. It's a prime example. We're going to come and play for Duff. Apparently, we're on verge. He's gone. Oh, I'm not going in now. So again, on to agent. What's next best possible move for me? You know what I mean. So it's a it's a fine act, isn't it? Is the is the is the Easter? I'll, I'll answer your point. Sorry, Neil. Mm. But is 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 the Easter deal completely off? Has it been confirmed? Yeah. Is is more is more or less gone to Charlton? We're off for better terms conditions. It's close to one for him. His father, Dicky, I said is something and that. So it's all it's all points towards Charlton. He were holding no, out for Duff. 
apparently it was going to be next week, but we all turned out well, what was happening with VAD. He's like backed off and now he's, he's gone elsewhere. So Charlton's like nipped in. So. No, I mean, I, I don't know. I haven't read stories. I haven't read stories around Ari Eistead. Around Ari Eistead. I, I would imagine, obviously, the closer from home, the closer to home aspect would have played a part. I mean, I think that obviously it might, it will do, and they'll be, they'll be nervous as we are about Duff departing. I understand yeah. that and I get that completely, but I think it's just, I think it's just they've got to play. It, I think due to the model that has been built around, not the model as in like what the owners have built, or I'm, I'm talking about the. It's hard to explain. So what's he, so the the players of the players are now they're signed is we we know that it's very like so for example let's take Connell Duff's own admission that Connell were in through the door before Duff was. Hmm. Then you've also got Nicky Cadden, who were in through the door before Duff came. Those have been two key players this, this season. They signed on the dotted line when there were no well, there were no manager there. So yeah, point. I don't think that the priority... I think, and I'm not blowing the own trumpet in my own club here, but I think they know that this club wants to be back in the championship. They want to be... They want to play a certain way that's going to cater around them and their skills. They're going to have club executives doing the doing. I would imagine that Khalid is very much involved with the players that we that we sign and the recruitment analysis and all that and all recruitment stuff that go along with it. And I would imagine that a part of these these contract negotiations are. I wouldn't be surprised if some of them players have release clauses in their contract key players and it's because we're trying to safeguard them and we are telling them and when you put a well sorry when you put a release clause into a contract unless you like barcelona who put stupid release clauses in for neymar thinking mm -hmm. they're never going to be matched that went well um then then they know you can kind of have an idea of that club is saying right we are going to sell you eventually and what we want to do, we're going to put these clauses into our contracts because we're trying to safeguard our interest. Now, with these players knowing that, I don't think that the manager, although it makes them feel a bit nervous thinking, but they're probably thinking the same thing as we are, that, you know what, you need to get the right bloke in here because I'm actually really enjoying my football. I enjoyed my football last season playing under this certain system. Mm -hmm. You need to pick a manager that's going to cater to my needs. Point, and yeah. get to my skills, and you also my teammate skills. Who I actually, and it's that sort of, yeah, camaraderie. Yeah, 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 get what you mean. Yeah. Course. So it's this is what this is what really you know this is why it's really important that this decision around the new manager is made right is 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 correct, and you need to get it bang on mm. uh, because it does have negative effects down the line. That's going to probably that's good, that can last and go on for seasons, as we found out under Scott and Asmaki. Yeah, um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, in answer to your question, yeah, it will have effect, short term effect. That's the reason why it's important that we get a new manager. Good uh, point, yeah. manager. Yeah, good point. I mean, Ryan, I'll, I'll, you know, Charlie and uh, Dan, we've had a good debate on that bit, manager. I mean, Dan, more of a man for you. Listening to that, or what is I, I'd, I'd say so as my, as my number yeah. one choice, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Just because, as, as well as just doing it and proving it at that level, got you know, getting Wednesday to a record league score in their history, mm. although it didn't get it, it didn't get it, although it didn't go up automatic, it had the desired effect, they got promoted. So, um, you know, and and that, I mean, remarkable comeback from four knock down in first leg of a semi final to come back and actually win playoffs. It's not just come back and get through to the final, they come back and won it. Mm. Albeit against us, but you know, it he's obviously got brilliant man management skills and he's an ex red, the next player, he knows the club, you know, you know, he knows the club, he knows the area, he's been he's been in Sheffield, you know, he knows it it he, he seems to make a perfect match for us at the moment. Whether whether it's the right time for Darren or not, whether he's burnt out from doing Wednesday, you know, from from Wednesday and he wants a bit of a break, who knows? 
I suppose I suppose we'll find out in next uh, next couple of weeks, won't we? But for me, definitely for me, it'd be my first choice. I think it makes it makes perfect sense at this time, and I think the players would would appreciate that as well. They'd see him coming respect in, respect him as well, and, and yeah. respect him and understand. You know, they know who he is, know what he's capable of. Hmm. I think it, we can then brush the uh, the loss of Dush under carpet and crack on with next season. Yeah, I mean, I'm still looking because of backroom staff. Uh, there's no coming at the minute. Like, it's just uh, Duff Watts just gone. Um, mm. I can assume that Patterson's going to go. So, again, as as much as it's going to be the coach, it's going to be the back room personnel, what's going to change and bits and bobs. Of, I think it's a week tomorrow, the way it works up time, so pre-season starts. So, I mean, Charlie, they said that progress, uh, you know, it's already processing well underway, so they must have had a start of it, knowing that that's it. There's no going back. Duff's made his mind up. It was just wait for compensation between uh, Swans in Southampton to for that to green light for us to move on. I mean, probably an unfair question this like, but would you be expecting weekend or at, at least by midweek we'd have a new new gaffer in? Um what I want or is it say... or is it not as different difficult because it's pre season at least you know, he could have Devane if he's not going to take charge at the pre-season, you know. You know what? Deep down, there's, <coughs> there's, there's two sides of me here. Hmm? First side is, I'm going to say it as it is. First side is, thinking negative, this is looking at it as a whole. We know what's happened previously. I don't expect out for another three weeks. But, realistically, I want some in place next week, Monday, the following week, the very latest. That is when the deadline should be because the game against Worksop, for me, it's going to be a lot of under-23s that are probably playing. I might be wrong, but I think that's what it'll be. But it can't be no later than that Monday. It's got to be mid, well, end of week next week, Monday, the very latest. Who now, knows? It might be stands watching Worksop game. This is what I mean. It's mm. it's it's a weird one, but again, me saying I don't expect out for the next couple of weeks. That's just going off previous history. That's probably me that's thinking negative, right? But I want us to have some in place. By, oh, Becky News has just announced him on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, hell. That's a first. <laughs> that's a first. That's it. I'll I'll be having a clown med at me soon. I'll have a, I'll have an act on a big red nose and. Uh, <laughs> And whatever else. Oh dear. Uh, yeah. yeah. I get where you're coming from, Bo, child. I mean, it's like I say, it's one of them things where it, it, it don't happen or it does happen kind of thing. So, yeah, I, I get where you're coming from with that. Uh, Ryan, just going on, uh, we've just lost uh, Dan for a minute. But just going on from that, uh, Ryan, what Charlie said via, you know, they said that it's well underway, you know. Uh, yeah. And I the same frame of mind as what Charlie was saying, via it's, you could see it going on probably another week. Ben and I Matt hope so, man. I, yeah. I hope so. Yeah, the tight. I know. Listen, the Duff one took a lot longer. The Duff pro, but we had time. We had time at that point because the season were over, wasn't it? As Baggy when you know game before end say after Huddersfield game, didn't he? Mm. He went after Huddersfield game after rele, um, relegation were confirmed. So we had we had time. We had time on his hands to get it right. We we don't have that luxury at this time. So. Hopefully, you know the right kind. You know, the club keeps saying that they they were prepared for all the eventualities, weren't they? So hopefully, this was one of the eventual. As soon as people started sniffing round um, back end of last season, you'd like to think that the club got together and were hopefully trying to identify some potential targets. But yeah. I suppose at that time there'd have been still people that are in the jobs that are not in the jobs right now. Um, mm. So that list may have dramatically changed from then to now, but. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. It's going to be with it next week. We need someone in place for um flight game. Just so, not so much because they're important games, but to get somebody in place so they can start, you know, putting their... Understanding players, players, understanding players, players, understand players, 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 understand what they're going to do, you know, trying to get players onto their onto their wavelength before before we kick off against um, Port Vale. And... Make signings as well. Yeah, so, make signings. You know, absolutely, mate. Because um, have an understanding of what players are going to go. Because like you've just said, Ryan, it, it's not just about 
they're not important games, but they are at the same time. But you want that manager. Yeah. You you do not want players coming in before the manager, and you don't want players leaving before the manager comes in. Because let's say, for instance, I'll pull a random, I don't know, let's say Jordan Williams goes to Blackburn Rovers. We get a good manager in. Williams looks and thinks, hold on a minute. If he'd have been a manager, I'd have potentially liked to play under him and I'd have stayed. Mm. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it, it yeah. sounds daft. There's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot at stake, man. It has to be said. There's a lot at stake, and I'm sure the club understand that. Yeah, yeah, good points. Uh, got Dan back. Uh, Dan, I mean, are we going to? You know, would you think we in a week we're going to get uh, an announcement that we've got a new coach in place? No, no, I think that we like. To... Two or three weeks, I would expect if I if it's longer than two or three weeks, I would start getting very concerned about um oh, up. So I think what uh um or having or, or we, we know we No, I think it's been breaking up. Yeah, I think, I think what we're getting is that uh, he, he thinks it's going to be back two or three weeks. For me, I think it'd probably be in a week. I'd like to think so. And I know I made a bit of a joke with, with Charlie there about, you know, it could be in stands against works. So, but I mean, once a clock are doing that because it's all one level in it. So it don't be exactly, <laughs> a, you know, a cloak and dagger thing, is it? If it's like, oh, I hope Dan was here. Look. Yeah. <laughs> so it's one Never of them. <laughs> could, could be Bruce Dyer going to watch... Uh, ah, you never know. Could, ah, you could, could do. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> but it's, it's one of them. I mean, it's it's got to be done soon, hasn't it? it you, can't, yeah. you can't drag it on, like Ryan was saying. We want it done sooner rather than later. There's loads of names out there who it could be. Would, yeah. I mean, would you give Devaney a shot or do you think he's too inexperienced? Do you know what? People have said Devaney, and I, I don't want, I do want to be a manager of Barnsley sooner, uh, soon, and I think he will be the next probably two or three years, but I don't want it to go sour for him too early and him go. Um, yeah, I think if we could get someone like a, a character like Darren Moore, who's a man manager, and if Devaney could be still there, we need to get each your feet and like, yeah, do you know what? And Darren Moore might hand over it and said, you know what? Yeah, here you go. And I think that could be a transition because I'm looking at Darren, uh, Darren Moore. I'm looking at Devaney now. You look who has been under. He's been under that many different ones, and and there's a great bridging gap between what he knows at academy side, the setup, and everything there. And for me, I want him to learn his trade, but also not to be chucked in deep end as well. Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of expectations will be beyond the next gaffer. And if Devaney comes in and said we said finish outside playoffs. Oh, it's been a shit season because last season we were in playoffs and we're nowhere near now. We should be doing it's a lot of pressure on Devaney. And again, you look at McKenna, who's doing an Ipswich and stuff like that. Sometimes you need that Robert Green and it can be done. You know, you look at Martin, it can be done. But I just think if he can have a couple of seasons underneath a, a gaffer, such as a Moore or whoever comes in and he can learn off him. Because when you look, he's like bitter and battered about and pick bits and bobs up of different ones, but he's never. Devane's never really laid anybody stable to be learning from. So he's yeah, been he's like not had them foundations about. in place, has he? No, it? no. So again, for me, I'd be for me, I'd be looking at Devaney and I'd be thinking, yeah, I want to Let's froze again. I'd be looking at someone like Devaney and saying, yeah. Couple of seasons time, you might be his next gaffer, and I think mm. it'd be a smooth transition straight in. I think that's my opinion anyway. That's yeah. my opinion on that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if if they do appoint him, we'll just have to get we'll have to get behind him, won't we? Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, he's a club legend, Danny, and he's put his heart and soul into that into our club. It'd be a shame to see it go belly up for him at this point when he's not quite ready. But if he does it's, get it's, we'll, have to, it's, we'll have to get behind him, and I'm sure we will, because you know we all. Here's one for you both then. If Devaney was to be, say, you know, gaffer and we got behind him, would, who would you expect him to bring in as his number two? I think he'd want someone rating to be his number two. Bobby? Uh, <laughs> I you think... Know, I'm going to say something... Well, I'll let you have your answer. I'm going to say something to him in it where I think might be a bit... I don't know. 
See, I'll let, I yeah, think I'll he'd bring Nicky Eden in as, as his number two. Right. That's equally as good. <laughs> yeah. Ryan, what are you saying? Or a mammal. Yeah, or just, just, yeah, or a mammal. <laughs> We're just bringing up some of the news about Redders. Just bring them all back. I'm going to say something here in a minute, and you're not far off at Mark. You're not far um, off at Mark, Ryan. Yeah, someone that I think if they're going to do an internal um, promotion, then do that internally as well. You know, like like the likes of Bobby Hassel and, and Nicky. You know, let's let's have it right. I've done an absolutely brilliant job in with Academy. Absolutely fantastic job. So, yeah, one of them too. Potentially, do you know what, do you know what I'm going to say? Go it might be a bit thing, right? Is that if Devaney did go up, I could see him bringing back someone like O'Neill Reffin, yeah, just to help out Bridge Gap, take some meat off it, off him because I know he's with that. But I could also see Nicky Eden get promoted up, what he's done with under 18s. And Adam Hamels wanted to take some coaching licenses. I could see him if he were interested to go to under 18s. Mm-hmm. I could see, I could see that happening. I could see that happening. And they'd all love the club, they'd all have that connection with the club. Yeah. With the area, I could see that. I could see that. I just, if if Devaney did go up, my worry is it needs someone there to take the heat off him a bit of guidance as well. Because I think Devaney would still be learning as a gaffer. And he saw that when, when two P teachers went at the latter end of the season, he was more or less left with kids because all the lawn players went back as well at the season before, so they went down. Yeah. And I think if he had someone right alongside him as a, you know, a word of advice, you know. Or someone up in a uh, box like Patterson does with, uh, with Duff, because that's all he did. We're up in Gantry, and his, his eyes and ears up there, look on radio down to Duff, telling him what's going off. And I think if Devaney had that same person up there who he knows and can trust in football in terms, I could see it working. But, I'll yeah. chuck one out there to you, then who could be his, his second looking at it? Mm-hmm. My missus has mentioned this person. I, I, I disagree with it completely, right? She I'll said, agree with your Mrs. Fenn because I don't want to be on the bad side of your missus. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'm not commenting on that one. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, she mentioned if Devaney did get up to number one, bringing somebody such as Andy Ritchie or um, Danny Wilson back to be like a number two. Mm. But I just don't think Danny mm. Wilson maybe. Andy mm-hmm. Ritchie, I've not heard no, I've not heard out about him in no, yeah. years. No, he's been out of game a long time, hasn't he? But mm. is that the type of person thinking about what you've just said with Devaney? And it's yeah, I, I've disagreed with it all week, and now I'm agreeing with you. So cheers, <laughs> pal. But <laughs> is that the person that Devaney could need as his number two, somebody like that, somebody that he knows, somebody Good that shout. he can trust. I'll t- tell you what he will get from Devaney. He won't, he won't be jumping shit, would he? No, no. I think you know if you want someone in for a, for a good few years, he is he's, he is Mister Barnsley. He's probably mm. the most senior person. I think he must be the most senior person, as in time spent at the football club than anybody in club. But by, by for me though, distance, he knows he is Mister Barnsley, isn't he? Yeah, he's, mm. got, he's got running through. He's got running through his veins. So for me though, if he didn't get in top six in first season. I wouldn't want him gone straight away. I'd no. want it, and obviously we want to be in top six and we want to go up. But mm. if he doesn't, look at how long it's took Darren Moore with Wednesday. Yeah. Right. Look at the look at Derby. Look at Bolton. Look at mm. Charlton. Look right? at Ipswich. It took four Ipswich. seasons to get where yeah. they, they, they were mid. They, they were mid table in League One for three seasons. You know they were they were stuck, yeah. and then they've just come out. You know, got got McKenna in and got that squad squad right, and and then they blow the league away. So. Mm. This is what I mean. In the two year that we've changed managers or whatever else, if we appoint somebody like Devaney and give him two year and just say, look, we might not go up this year, but this is it's the time for Devaney to learn the roles, get the experience, so then in two years' time, he can make that push. Yeah. I'd rather see that happen than see managers coming in and out at Spiral doing everything. Absolutely agree. Call. Absolutely agree. 100%. And I think because us fans are buying to that and be patient and be, 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 be back into yeah. it. Not so, we don't back any manager to it, but one of his, I said one of his own, but you know what I mean? Someone yeah. who is Barnsley through and through is like, we'd buy into that as his fans, it'd be a fan's favourite, we'd buy into that. And again, I think it, the key would be as well for him to get his, his battle staff that he wants 
like Devaney said, oh, do you want Branja? Cater to that because it did be tough. The, the, the full passing in from MLS. So, look, if, if Devaney did watch choice and they said, right, who do you want in your setup? We'll back you, right? You want, we'll get him in and here you go, let's do it. And I think it also promote youth as and when it were needed and it'd get back bridge, it'd understand the link up there. Yep. And it wouldn't be answerable to like say such such as Duff. Because I think, I don't know what I will close on this, but I think Aidan Marsh and Joe Ackroyd might have a better look in next season than it would the last season. It was having getting loaned out. That's my take on it. Yeah. See, I don't just think it's them two either. I'm I'm gonna be controversial here, right? Because I've not oh. rated him of the last couple. Of, I know I can't do that. I've got to <laughs> be happy. Oh yes. Um it's I mentioned it earlier. There's a couple of players in this squad that are key players. Mm. I think Iseka will be a key player. I do think some of young lads like Matty Wolf will be a key player. Um, but there's one person that's not been able to perform because he's been thrown in at defence. He's gone out on loan. And from what we've read, he's proved his worth. Is it time for Jasper Moon to step up? I personally, I don't, I don't want to sound disrespectful to him, but I don't think... He's quite ready, mm. but he's proved that he can do it at Burton. So yeah, I, I, I mean, just... when I saw him for when he first come in, and he were playing, they were playing him in midfield at first. I thought hey, he's a bit of a yeah. superstar, yeah. and I, and I just think like that season of four when we were just everybody was struggling. They threw him in at deep end, and lad just couldn't he just couldn't cope. But so, is, he, is you know he's, he's also a couple of years older now and got a bit more experience. Is he is is, is like you say? Is he ready? Is he ready? Because he's just done it at Burton and done a really good job at this same level that we're playing at now. So why not? So why sure. not? Hopefully, because sure. because that's what we want, don't we? We want the lads, the young lads coming through. We want the young lads coming through and and that have been at club a while and and, and kind of coming through into the first mm. team. It's it's that natural progression. We need we need that as a as a club. Game chance. Sure. Not like being controversial on here. Not like being controversial. That's what we love. But we yeah. call it as we see it and it's, it's respectful. You know, we're not slating about we're not being disrespectful. That's what it's all about. And again, people might agree and disagree. Let us know in your comments below. I mean, some great content. I mean, unfortunately, we lost James and uh, Dan due to connection issues <laughs> and that. But thanks for uh, them contributing. Ryan and Charlie, thanks for uh, having some de being you know, being, the decent comments and decent thoughts as well. Um, again, We'll keep his eyes peeled and, you know, looking at socials and everything like that. If you haven't seen some of the memes on I Up and Down, have a look at them on Twitter because I think the piss, taking piss right brilliant at Jeremy Lyle. He's uh, quality. Uh, lie detective <laughs> quality. So give him a look up. If I'll cheer up and back get yeah, it Absolutely over it. quality. Yeah, man. But uh, Ryan and Charlie, appreciate you taking time out. Um, I always like talking to you, like I do all other guests. Some great content and good, some very good debate. Please like, subscribe and share. Uh, have a good rest of your weekend if you can. Uh, one thing left to say, you were heads. <laughs>